happen. Um, there you go. Now we're ready. All right. And uh, so I guess uh, with with the first uh, item there on the public public comment, uh, we were going to uh, bring Chris Tomlinson in uh, um, to uh, discuss the uh, uh, the options uh, relative uh, to some investments. And let, let me just toss in there. Brian Funkhauser is now joining us. There you go, Chris. You should see the handout materials that you sent to Diane. Sure. Thank you. Um, so good afternoon. Um, so I was asked to uh, give you guys some options for, um, I guess it's some excess funds that if you're going to invest them rather than putting them into CDs uh, to give you some options as far as getting them uh, somewhat into the market. Um, and some of this money is from overperformance of the pension, which lowered your uh, the MMO. So you, know, you had to put less money into the pension than was budgeted. So uh, that's a good thing. Um, it's also, I think, a good thing to maybe put that money aside because at some point, you know, the pension's going to underperform that actuarial assumption. I hope I'm wrong and we do the best we can to make sure it doesn't happen. Um, but it, it's likely at some point to do that and to be able to have that money to be able to, uh, to come up with it in the short term would be a good thing. So currently, the money's in CDs. And if you're going to renew a CD, I mean, to put money away for a year, you're getting about 0.7%. Uh, you have to put it away, basically five years, lock it up to get over 1%. Um, so to, to lock that money up doesn't make a ton of sense. Um, and also to get the better return along with that liquidity of getting the money into the market. Um, certainly my recommendation would not to be to take too much risk. Um, I'm going to show you three options. Uh, one is what we would consider our conservative allocation, which is about 30% in the stock market. Um, one is about 50% in the stock market, which is a moderately conservative investment. And then a moderate investment is about 60%. All of these um, allocations would be invested in a similar way to we, what we do with the pension using all index funds to get the lowest return. I mean, the highest return at the lowest cost, excuse me. Um, so if you look at the, the screen that's up there now, that shows you what the kind of the volatility that you can expect from the stock market as a whole. It's based on the S&P 500. <clears throat> and the red numbers at the bottom are showing you that each year the market has some downturns. Um, you know, if you look, you know, the average downturn is probably a little bit over 10% during the course of the year. But then if you look at the bars that are going up, that's the, you know, the returns and three out of every four years are positive. Um, so you can see that getting the money into the market is the best way to to have it grow. And as long as you have some time to do so, um, you know, you should do considerably better. Uh, and that's been proven with, with the pension plan as well than leaving the money into CDs. So Dan, if you could go to the next um, slide, please. <clears throat> so this is our 3070, um, the, the performance review of that. And this is done through the, uh, the GIPS performance standards, which are the global investment performance standards. So they're documented that they're <clears throat> excuse me, actual returns on our portfolio. Um, so you can see the yearly returns, um, you know, as well as, you know, what it does against its index. So this, you know, this return, <clears throat> excuse me, is, is built to get a return of somewhere between four and 5%. And if you can look at the numbers that are on there, it's done better than that in more years than not. Um, so that's, that's the con most conservative one. The next slide will be the one in the middle, uh, which is about a exactly a 50-50. And just to give you some perspective, for, for long-term investing, with a 50-50 at mo at allocation model, the, the swing in returns over one year, over the last you know, 40 years, is a, high, a low of negative, th of negative 15 to a high of plus 33. Uh, but and then you spread that out to five years, you'll get a five year return for this type of allocation. And the lowest return that you'll see over any five year period is a positive 1%. And the highest five year period is a plus 21%. If you take that out to 10 year periods, the, the lowest return is a positive 2% a year, and the highest is a positive 16% a year. So the benefit of leaving the money in there for a little while, and at this level of risk is not 
it, it's not taking no, so much risk on a, on a one to 10. This is probably between a four and a five on a risk scale. Um, and then the last, the last allocation that I will show you is the 6040, which is again, a little bit more into the market, into the stock market performance. You know, the returns will be a little higher. The downside will, will be a little lower should you have a down year, um, you know, in, in the stock market. But uh, all of these allocations, again, are using index funds. So basically you're owning every stock in the stock market and every bond that's out there in the bond market. Um, and you will get market like performance. Um, you know, just it's a, a matter of, you know, where the concentration is and how much money's going into each of the index funds. Um, that's, you know, they're basically the options should you decide to invest this money that we would recommend. Uh, I'm happy to, you know, answer any questions, um, concerns, need more information. Um, let me know. All right, thank you, Chris. Sure. I guess uh, did we want to hold hold off any action on this until until we get to that point, or uh, what, what were your thoughts, or unless there's well, any you, questions I, at this point? I guess you might want to ask questions at this point if we're going to let you know, kind of let Chris uh, head off, and we, we could make you could make the decision at the agenda item. But if you want to have any discussion, you know, now might be the time to do that. All right. Yeah. So anyone has any any questions at this point? Um, we did we did um, uh, bring this up in the uh, prior meeting, and it's and it is included in the meeting minutes. Um, so again, if there's any any questions, I only have one. Bob Spandler. Hey, Chris. There's no. If we put this in, if we both put this in there. There's no, um, and for some unforeseen reason, we need that. You can just, you can take it out. There's no, it's not like a CD where you're penalized. No charge. No, it's fully, fully liquid all the time. Uh, you know, the risk of taking it out is if you have to, you know, there'll be a little bit of money in cash, but if you're taking more out, you know, the risk is, has it gone down since you put it in, but it's not sure. like you pay a penalty to take it out. There's no charges going in there. No charges or anything like that. Thank you. Sure. We have done similar accounts for lots of, uh, you know, authorities and different uh, nonprofit organizations with money that's coming from just the same type of situation. Um, so it's not an uncommon thing to, to be looking at doing this. So, Chris, your recommendation at this point is is what you seem to be leaning towards the 50 50. Uh, yes, but, you know, again, that that's it, it. We can certainly talk about the tolerance for risk with this money. Um, that's that, that's the one that we feel comfortable with, with while you don't have a, a definitive time frame. It's not it's not a long term thing from from my understanding, because you may need this money in, in a couple or a few years. So. Um, that would be that would be the one that I think is the strongest fit for the information that I have. Uh, um, again, we can talk about the tolerance for risk for this investment, and you know, the ultimate decision is up to you. Um, but that that would be my recommendation today. All right, thank you. Sure. All right. Well, I guess if uh, there are no other questions, uh, then we'll we'll move move into the agenda. Then, and... right. thanks, Chris. Thank you very much. And just let me know how we go forward. And uh, or if there's more questions, if anyone needs anything from me, um, feel free to reach out. We'll be in touch. Thanks. thanks All right. Chris. Thank you. All right. We've got the uh, uh, minutes to the September twenty third, twenty twenty one. Meeting. If there are any any comments, uh, questions, uh, uh, or a motion for uh, for filing. Here, Bob Spanler, I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. Thanks, Bob. This is Frank. I'll second that. All right. Thanks. And we have motion and a second. 
All those in favor indicate by uh, saying aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? It, right, it, motion Rob carries. Has, Rob Hess, I abstained because I was not present. All right. Well, we'll note that in the minutes. You know, move on to the financial statements, uh, September 2021. On page seven for September, um, I wish there were different things I could say about each of these financial statements so I don't sound like a broken record, but I guess it's good that it's pretty stable and nothing radical is happening. So um, at the risk of sounding like a broken record, um, the revenues for September include the transportation payments, uh, our subdivision admin fees, uh, uh, reimbursement from DEP for the, the cap invoicing that we did back in August, um, outstanding uh, invoices from transportation. It takes them six weeks to process our invoices. So there's always outstanding invoices. And we have an outstanding invoice from July from DCED for the toolkit. Um, on the expense side of things, um, overall, we're fairly under budget um, and varying amounts depending on the program. Um, and transportation, um, it looks like we're under budget, um, but the, that program is most impacted by the timing of the consultant invoices and reimbursements that we have. If we pick through the outstandings to equate it to what's been spent to date, we're pretty much on, on target in terms of the budget that, that's expected at this time. Um, regional support, pretty much on, on target. Um, the county support program, um, if you look at Perry County, this at this point in, in the year, we usually start talking about Perry County and how we budget pretty much three days a week. Um, um, but Jason really works five days a week on that program. We try to get him to um, put as much time in transportation and other projects like hazard mitigation or toolkit or whatever um, as we can relate to the Perry County program as we can. Um, um, as time marches on, it becomes um, obvious that uh, our, uh, we stress our budget a little bit to the Perry County program. Um, the way we budget for his part time. Um, our subdivision administration, as long as our revenues are more than our expenditures, that's a separate uh, fee based item and we're on target there. Uh, the LPA program again Perry County looks like it's just about to go over budget, but that was a an extra um, expense with Spring Township, um, who had since um, paid their extra work that has has been um, conducted for them. And our regional other is education and, and um, our annual lunch. So that's kind of the overview in terms of revenues and expenses for. September. On the next page, the itemized expenses. Um, you'll see that the boxed items are higher or lower than 10% of the expected. Our copies, um, uh, our budgeted amount is something that we really need to look at. Um, we get a base $5 fee basically every month for um, copies from Xerox. So uh, obviously, we've had some overages as we move through the year, so we'll have to adjust our budget um, amount for, for next year um, to kind of balance that out. Um, office supplies and expense, we have some minor purchases as staff's been returning to the office. Postage, um, again, we'll need to bump up that as we're sending more things out um, with our mailing. Um, travel and parking. Um, a lot of it has been HPMS and traffic counting this year. So, um, and limited travel to meetings. Um, so we're not spending a whole lot in terms of travel and parking. Um, our business expenses, a lot of that was budgeted for a move, which we're not doing, thank goodness. Um, training, we're a little bit under budget, but we just um, sent three people to the, 
the statewide um, planning conference in Pittsburgh last month. So um, we'll be catching up to budgeted level um, probably by November uh, statement. Our rent, uh, pretty much in line. Computer software and support, we have a lot of low cost monthly subscriptions that pretty much get us through. Um, and our other regional expenses are basically for this month, um, the next couple of months of our, the annual lunch expenses. So that takes care of September. Any questions? Okay, I will move on to October, which is fairly similar to September. Um, our revenues um, that are different from September are Quarterly, fourth quarterly increments came in from Dauphin and Perry counties um, for the, you know, the local match for the transportation, the regional support, and the county support programs. Um, we had a sponsor and luncheon fees under other revenues that are coming in. Um, we did have a minor um, problem with our electronic deposit machine at the middle of the month. Um, so a lot of the revenue checks and deposits for October happened in November. So it's going to seem like we had a really active November um, when you see it, but that's just um, technology at, at its finest. Um, so expenses. Uh, if you look at the transportation program under the state line item, and it says we're over budget by 109 by 109. Um, I assure you that we have not spent more than the state has allowed us to spend. Um, earlier in the year, we were awarded two different supplemental um, funds for projects that amount to about $762,000, and we did not amend that into the budget number. So we're at about 40%, um, um, not 109. I'm sure the state wouldn't let us get away with spending more money than they will. Um, I, and again, you really start to see the Perry County support as at a, over at 100% um, and as well the, the LPA. Um, our model ordinance and toolkit is also over, but it's pretty much wrapping up. So um, I think that's gonna kind of level out at that, that point. Um, so overall, in October, we're ending up at 68% of the budget. Um, and then on the next page, the itemized um, expenses are pretty much the same. Uh, we had a professional services uh, that includes Conrad Siegel, I think. Um, in that as, as well as the um, Harrisburg University project that we've assigned to that, that category. Um, other regional expenses, that again is the annual luncheon um, expenses. And for those regional other expenses, I will say overall, um, we are, about forty six hundred dollars to the to the good in terms of um, what we've taken in in terms of sponsorships and uh, luncheon fees and um, what we've spent on the different activities. Um, so it looks like we're over budget, but we've been able to um, stay within what we've actually brought in. Um, does anybody have any questions on any of October? Okay. Uh, I guess, um, yeah, with, with that, uh, it, it would, uh, it would seem that the, um, uh, the financial statements we've got uh, a few overages uh, but uh, I, I think in uh, in in total uh, we're still under budget uh, for 
for the time of the year that we're looking at here um, overall. So with that, um, if uh, if there's uh, a motion, uh, I get, we'll do we'll do both of these together. I, I think uh, we can do that. Correct, uh, Diane? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If uh, if there's a motion for uh, filing an audit uh, for both the uh, September 2021 and October 21 uh, financial statements, Kirshner makes the motion. Thanks, John. I'll second it. Thank you. Motion and seconded. Uh, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Uh, and opposed? All right, motion carries. Thank you very much. And we'll move right on to uh, the payment of expenses. Okay, on page 11, um, starting on September 1st, um, and I think we had gone over this the last meeting, um, we had our investment checks that um, we sent into the pension somehow got lost in the mail. So we put a stop payment on on those checks and that's the top uh, part of September that you're looking at. Um, as you go down to um, reference 4220 and 21, you'll see that we are reissued those and those have since cleared. Um, sponsorships, um, you'll see throughout this, um, the ledgers, uh, some annual luncheon um, expenses, but also um, the revenues from the luncheon fees of people paid before the lunch at the door and we've invoiced people afterwards. So there's kind of a cascading effect. You'll see um, many references to lunch fees paid in varying amounts throughout um, September, October and into November. Um, on page 12, there's special projects. It says DCED cap two, but it's, that's the DEP funding that we were reimbursed. Um, all of these are pretty normal. Again, we're, you'll see the luncheon fees paid um, at the top of page 13, sponsorship. Um, and you'll see uh, a little bit further down, fourth quarter increments being paid by Perry County. Um, reference 4261, that's NavJoy. That's a software, um, I don't know if Steve can explain more about what that is. Um, for traffic, something or other. Yeah, it relates to us having this, uh, we're being a Waze partner now where we're contributing information on road closures. Uh, NavJoy's given us a uh, kind of a reporting mechanism to standardize that process of getting the information from the municipalities and, from, and providing it to Waze. That's what that relates to. A little bit below there is uh, reference 4265, Conrad Siegel. Um, that's our actuary um, with their reporting. Um, the Dauphin County fourth quarter increment came in. Um, Spring Township LPA for 2022. Um, they're participating um, as they were very active last year in that program. Uh, and that's pretty much the outstanding um, items for September and October um, for action. Um, and I'll just move on to, to date for November. We have that um, reimbursement for the, the toolkit came in from DCED. Um, and then Cumberland County's fourth quarter increment um, and the our health benefits, PIMIC, is the Benicon refund. We got another refund of $23,000. <laughs> I just don't understand. Um, and those, honestly, were a couple of the larger deposits that got hung up with our electronic deposit machine not working properly in October. So, um, And then all of our township joined in um, for the 2022 um, LPA program for Perry County. I have any questions for September and October? All right, I guess uh, if we could have uh, a uh, 
a motion for uh, approval of uh, payment of the expenses for uh, September 1 through October 31st. Ledger. Tom, this is Frank. I think we have a, a, a motion and a second there. <laughs> yeah, the names. We got Frank for the second. Did, okay. I, have that, did um, I have that right, Frank? Yes, that's that works. All right, we have motion and second. Uh, all those in, in favor, um, indicate by saying aye. 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 And opposed, uh, motion carries. Thank you very much. Um, so the next is the health reimbursement account. We have one payment um, in September and October for action and overall, um, just considering the 2021 uh, deductible reimbursements we had, we were at 8.5% of the budgeted amount. So we're, we're pretty, pretty good health, I guess. Healthy people. I guess we're, why we're getting our refunds. Mm -hmm. we'll need That's action better that. than the alternative for sure. Huh? It, Exactly. Yep. Health costs go down during a pandemic. <laughs> they don't. And we'll need action on that. Right. Reimburse. Yeah. Is there a, a motion uh, for the uh, September, October 2021 20, Health Reimbursement Act uh, account? Rob, I'll make that motion. Second, thanks, Deb. All right, uh, motion and seconded. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed. All right. Thank you. Motion carries. So this, um, the CD and the sweep accounts kind of can flow into that investment discussion. Um, we have a, a ending balance in our sweep account, $580,000. Certainly it's a balance that covers our um, expenses three to six months, um, which is a, a rule of thumb to have available um, should something happen. Um, Unfortunately, with this account, when we opened up the, the trust account, um, the interest rate was 1.25, and we have since dropped to 0.35. Um, so we're not earning quite as much on, on those funds, but nevertheless, they're all together, um, all insured, um, which makes managing them a lot more fluid. Um, in terms of the CD investments, this is where if you want to call it extra money or the, the money we have been kind of saving over the years um, from the investments we've had um, from budgeted amounts that we not, did not necessarily spend um, uh, kind of have fallen into this category of, of funds that we wanted to have invested but able to get at. Um, and this is the, the money that... Um, would be involved in terms of what Chris Tomlinson was earlier talking about. Um, we have uh, two CDs, one's maturing in January, the other's maturing in April. Collectively, it's over $200,000. Um, um, in terms of the penalty uh, for early withdrawal, it's a month's worth of interest um, so you can see it's not going to break the bank um, in terms of penalties if we would withdraw that early and switch how those are invested. So um, I guess that's the status of the sweep in our, our CD savings, if you will. All right. Um... Is there uh, any any discussion uh, on the investment options uh, at this point? Uh, is there 
Are there any any thoughts in terms of uh, which direction we want to go on this? Um, it's Rob. I'm just making sure I understand. Wouldn't it make sense? And maybe I completely missed it, but wouldn't it make sense for more of it to be? And maybe the newer CDs that we get, we're not going to be able to be. I didn't hear. Was there a, a, a listed rate on any newer CDs? No. Usually, I check around when the the CDs mature. Um, the rates have been slowly going down. Um, so are they going so, to be very similar to the sweep right now? I would imagine. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, what the, the more recent one was what 0.65%? Yeah. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 It's historically they've they've dropped. Yeah, so in one year, we're going to make 662 bucks versus if we want to take a risk and put it in, you know, even the 30, the 30, 70 or the 50, 50. That's going to know, eat, like, eat away at the, anything you're getting on a return basis. Yeah, I mean, you know, you could do, you could make $5,000 in a year right. versus $662, right. Right. you know, with what I, what I see is very minimal risk. And it is very fluid. That's, that's the question I asked. I mean, if we see the market taking a downturn in the future, I mean, you could take it out in, in a moment. You know? right. And we haven't touched those CD that's, that's what balances I in quite some time. Yeah. Or that's ever. what I it's just been asked. Years. It's yes. been since Patty and Tim have been here. Yeah. So uh, it's, right. And they've been retired for. You know, yeah, so that money's been there years. between eight and 10 years and right. we haven't needed it yet. Right. You know, I mean, it's all about funding the pension later in, in right. you know, if times do get tough on time. Yeah. That, was, that was the internal discussion we were having. See if we can't get it to work for us in the event that we do have a pension issue moving yeah. forward. And all of a sudden we're writing a hundred thousand. It gives us, right, right. Gives us that ability that it's not going to then affect the operating cash if we if we do hit a downturn. So all right. Um any additional discussion discussion or uh, is there a a motion that somebody wants to make or or no decision at all <laughs> diane or steve this is debbie do you do you either of you or the two of you have a recommendation i would follow chris's recommendation um especially in in terms of the short term um if we would need it quickly he seems to think that that's the strongest fit for the short term. Um, I, yeah, you're making much more return on that 50 50 in that in that turn. Yeah, you know, if you and if you would need it, you wouldn't make you would have made some money. Right. Hey, it's always mm -hmm. something you can consider adjusting the mix in the future. Right. Year to date, was it 15 percent? Right. This year alone. Yeah. yeah. Right. 15 yeah. right. percent. That yeah. sure beats 0.65. <laughs> You know, yeah, that may be a question for Chris Tomlinson. Um, uh, if uh, I would, I would imagine they've got a money market account set up, um, and the rates would probably be very similar to the CD account. Um, in other words, if you wanted to pull it out of the market or out of that fifty. Oh, okay. Okay. But, like I say, it would still likely get some interest. I just don't know what what account uh, or what amount there. Their right. accounts yeah. include. Yeah, and I, Deb, just from my perspective, I, I I agree with Diane at this point. I, I think rather than constantly watching this, you know, monitoring the CD rates, watching them making adjustments and and losing interest, this seemed like a you know that what Chris was suggesting at that fifty fifty 
you know, it doesn't seem like a great deal of risk, especially when you consider we haven't touched the current accounts in several years, we would anticipate, you know, ideally we'll anticipate that to continue. Mm -hmm. So it seems like a reasonable approach to me as well. And if we need to make a motion, Bob Spindler, I'll make a motion that, I mean, I don't know how far we want to go. I'm willing to take one of these at this point and put it in that 50-50 market. See what that does for us. You want to do right. one now, the one that's so the, the one, one that's, that's going to mature January. here in January seventh. Put that in now, and then have this conversation in a few months. Yes, uh, is I, that what you that, want? That, that would be my motion that we take the one that's going to mature here in January, uh, put that in that fifty-fifty uh, market, and hang on to the other one till it matures, and we'll just see what the first quarter of uh, twenty twenty-two does. I'll second that motion. All right, uh, the motion as as indicated in a, in a second. Um, any additional discussion? If not, uh, is there uh, um, are everyone uh, in favor uh, of that motion indicate by saying aye. 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 And opposed. All right, well, that motion carries in. I would still still check with uh, Chris Tomlinson though, like I say, to verify uh, that that if you did pull it out, uh, that it would sit in a on money market account and find out what the interest rate on that is at this okay. at this point as well. Okay. And I would imagine it's going to be very comparable to the CD rates. Probably. Okay. All right. Um, intergovernmental reviews none. Communications. And we just have a, a letter from Benicon, our health provider, um, saying that we, our second surplus fund check for 2020 um, came in. Uh, it was deposited in November, so it was another 23,000. Um, so collectively this year, we've gotten about 46,000 um, in refunds. Um, which is good. We'll take it. All right. Yeah, it looks like that. What did, did they provide some information um, about various rates, or, or is this that was maybe some prior or leftover from Chris's um, discussion? Sorry. Oh, that was Chris's um, initial. Oh, yeah, sorry. yeah okay. sorry. That was yeah, Chris's initial email. About. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. No. All right. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Thanks. All right, and the uh, lease agreement with Veteran Building uh, Investors, yep. LLC. Sign, we're, we're under the new lease. So All right, as then, Diane said, we are thrilled not to be moving. How long is that for? <laughs> five, five years. years. Five years. And did was there was there much of a rate increase, or is that is that uh, every year? Uh, what the percent escalation? Was. Uh, it was fairly comparable to the increases we were seeing um, with. The economic development lease we had it was less than we had budgeted for. Correct. We anticipated a higher go going, knowing we were going private as opposed to the county. We expected it. We had looked around to see what mm -hmm. rates we might expect, and they they gave us a pretty good deal. Yeah, I think they did. So, yeah, a little bit higher than we were forget paying. What, I forget yeah. what the percent increase was, but it wasn't what we expected. It was less than what we expected. And the only other communication that I had to add to the that's not on this is um we did send the budget request letters to the perry county commissioners and the um dawson county commissioners we actually had a budget hearing yeah i think tuesday i think we're supposed to relay a thank you yes to you for the dolphin county commissioners were beyond thrilled when we said that the commission uh wanted to cover the local match requirement transportation and give them a zero 
uh, increase, they could have been happier. So they they did. They, who moved that? <laughs> What's the question we got? <laughs> so we gave everyone credit. We said everybody agreed to that. So they were they were thrilled. And I believe Perry County Commissioners are publishing their budget next Monday. Yeah, yeah, we did not meet with them, but they accepted it and it's part of the, the 2022 budget for them. So all systems go. All right, budgets are in place then, or will be shortly. Yeah. Anyway, we'll finalize it in January. All right. Okay. We'll move on to the reports and staff progress report. All right. I'm actually going to click on a couple of things here as, as I go through here. I, I don't have a ton of things I'm going to bring to your attention, but I do have some significant ones. So um, we may have mentioned the last night was September, I guess, when we approved the uh, regional transportation plan update. So it's now known as uh, RTP 2045. We have to have a minimum of 20 year time period. So this is the, uh, it's all online. This is the website, hatsregionaltransportationplan.org. If you're really curious, you can um, take a look um, at the regional transportation plan. That was approved. Uh, another thing I'm going to highlight for you, we periodically talk about the I-81 study that, that we're doing. Um, and I'm bringing this to your attention because uh, here in, by mid-December, we're going to be having some online uh, public meetings um, for this component. And if <laughs> this thing wouldn't advance, uh, in terms of uh, our the focus areas, I actually had a meeting this morning to talk about um, what's being proposed in the greater Carlisle area. Um, we also have some other focus areas that are high priority. You see this greater Harrisburg, that's in the vicinity of the, of the 83 interchange. And then we have this rural Dauphin Lebanon, which you know kind of comes from just below the 78 split um, down in uh, roughly Mountain Road uh, kind of area. So, and the fourth one that's going to be covered in these public meetings is is down in Chambersburg. But um, you know, look look for the information on those. We have them. I think we're going to do them on back to back uh, days. Um, but there'll be some public outreach materials just integrated into the website as well. So if you're interested in what's being thought about um, for 81, um, some good stuff. One intriguing thing is probably a little bit of a longer term improvement, but you know, the one of the key issues here in the greater Harrisburg area, if you're, you come up 83 on the 81, you know, you then uh, you get that uh, merge activity where everybody goes across to get off at progress um, they have an alternative um, shown there that would eliminate that merge activity uh, and allow you to get a get across there and get out without having to do that because that's a that's a big safety problem uh, in through there so that's an interesting one same thing if you're headed northbound on 81 there um, you know if you come up off of let's say Cameron Street or whatever and then you want to uh, get on to stay on 81 northbound, you have to basically go the whole way across the highway there before 83 to get um, there. They've come up with some, uh, it's actually fairly inexpensive things, some, a lane striping way to kind of split that merge more. And you wouldn't have to go the whole way across, make that decision as early as you do now as to which lane to get in. So some, some pretty good stuff I think you'd be interested in. Um, similarly, if you're interested in Carlisle, there's some fairly innovative um, things down there as well. So anyway, I just wanted to tell you to look for that in uh, by mid-December for the, for the public meetings. Um, we also had um, some really good discussions and this is in light, uh, it's kind of was basically in anticipation of the infrastructure bill that ended up passing was signed on Monday. Um, we got a request from both the Dolphin and Perry County commissioners to kind of come talk to them about transportation funding and where it might be going and what some priorities might be and what if. Um, so I, th I thought both of those conversations went really well. And 
now that the bill is passed, basically where we are is we're waiting for the decisions to be made of exactly which pools of funds those dollars are moving into and how much of it comes to yeah. hats for that uh, moving forward. So we're actually at the point now where we're doing the update, they call it the 2023 transportation improvement uh, program, or, um, you know, where we have certain dollars allocated to us for use. Mm -hmm. So we're doing that now. What the effect of this infrastructure bill is likely to be that we'll have kind of a second go at that. We have only limited dollars now, but we're, as soon as we get done with the TIP process, we're going to find out what the additional dollars are and we'll get a second cut at that. So it's an interesting process this year um, for programming new projects. So do you think we'll manage some of that infrastructure money through through this transportation money that we get now? I mean, yeah. that we'll have to divvy it up. Yeah, and, and that's, that's one thing. I, I don't know what planning funds, you know, yeah. might be made available in addition uh, to that. So there's a, you know, everybody's like, wow, how much money did we get? Nobody knows yet. Um, so the, it's in the works, but yeah, could affect us in a number of different ways in a, in a positive way. Um, I think I mentioned before speaking, while I'm on the topic of transportation, um, we're getting very close um, to issuing a, an RFP, I guess, to bring the bike share program back to Harrisburg in the region. So I think that's, that's gonna be a real positive thing in 22. Um, and another, th so, you know, speaking of that kind of thing, we actually found ourselves uh, in need to update our traffic counting equipment that we have that we use each year. And this, this year we're, we're going with two different types of counters, some of which um, will count not only vehicular traffic, but give us an ability to automate the process for counting bicycles and pedestrians. Um, so we'll be able to do a variety of things moving forward that we didn't previously have the capability for. So I think that's going to be good. Um, Diane mentioned to you, and I've, I've showed you this, I think once before, the planning toolkit. This was the DCED funded uh, effort. This is the toolkit website um, that we pulled together for that. Since the last time you saw it, that we've integrated our model ordinances um, into it. Um, we presented this as I think Diane indicated at the PA Planning Association conference and got a really strong positive response. Somebody went, why did you guys do this? Why wouldn't the state do something like this? <laughs> so so uh, that went really well. And in fact, we were some subsequently asked to do a presentation on it to the uh, Township Supervisors Association, I think in January. So um, I think really a worthwhile effort, um, really positive. So. Um, you can take a look at this uh, if you if you like. And the the last planning effort that I'll mention is end of September, we finalized and submitted this countywide action plan to uh, to DEP. And at the end of October, we applied for we were eligible for the first time for implementation monies um, for the countywide action plan. Um, so that. That application has been submitted. We should, by the end of the year, hear what we got there. But we actually just got an email, I guess two days ago now, from DEP that they're, they want us to participate in a webinar next week because they have more money. <laughs> and they, and they, they, you know, for, for anyone that completed one of these plans. So it was a great time to have done the plan um, because it's a, it's a program that's being funded more effectively, I guess I would say. So we're, we'll, we'll keep you abreast of what, uh, what improvements we do there. Um, I think that's, that's basically the highlights that I would uh, offer for you out of the progress report at this time, unless you have any questions. Yeah, I had one question. I uh, saw a guy I recognized uh, on ABC uh, 27 News uh, at the 83 South Bridge. That guy was good. South Bridge. <laughs> you pro provide a little uh, update on what's happening there and uh, um, what, uh, what, what kind of thoughts or issues might have been discussed at the public meeting? 
Yeah, I was, I was actually surprised at how well that interview went because they basically contacted us and said, we'll be there in 10 minutes, uh, which they did. Uh, and then I had no idea what they were going to even ask me, but it was on, yeah, what is the, what, what effects should people anticipate from the infrastructure funding coming into the region? So it was just some general thoughts, but that, that was a great thing because I have a contest with my daughter, who's more famous. <laughs> so, <laughs> Any opportunity for something like that, I I, I emphasize. I, I sent her the link to the uh, to the video clip for that. Yeah, but it, I heard where, you know, where, yeah, I heard where they're looking at a double double structure in there. They'll put a new bridge in and then take the old one out and put another one eighty three to replace that. Yeah, at eighty three crossing South. Yeah, bridge. just if if any for anybody that remembers how they did the Turnpike sure. Bridge, same thing. Uh, and I've been, uh, this past uh, week, I've been at a way too many I-83 um, meetings, I'll say, uh, mainly related to whether or not it's gonna be told. Um, you know, a lot of, lot of political opposition to that. Um, I, I'll just share that the uh, PennDOT district executive here that's kind of leading that effort would tell you that he has no idea whether it's gonna go forward with tolling or some other revenue source doesn't know how that's going to unfold. There was some legislation that was just passed this week to uh, put an end to the tolling the house. Uh, concept. Yeah, it already had been in the Senate. Now it's went through the House. Mm -hmm. But the governor has said that he does not expect mm -hmm. to sign it. Um, so um, who knows? Uh, you know, and it's it's complicated by the fact that the infrastructure bill was just passed and they yet they don't know what exact revenues are going to be available. So I uh, It'll be fascinating to see how that does unfold over the next month or two. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what what kind of impacts uh, you know the tolling would have from the standpoint of uh, diversion of traffic onto uh, Harvey Taylor and yeah, the, uh, and other the, other uh, uh, crossings. The, they they did a diversion analysis, uh, Tom, and the the number is that they expect a third of the traffic to divert. Okay, uh, and they and they have. Um, at least they have a, a number of intersect. We were actually part of this process. Number of intersections that they identified that uh, needed improvements. Those improvements are to be paid out of the interstate tip, even though they're not on the interstate because they're they're caused by the the interstate project. So um, you know, again, something to follow and watch very closely. Um, moving forward, but yet, you know, when you're talking 120,000 vehicles a day going over that bridge, you're looking at a 30% diversion, uh, at least in the short term. That's a lot. Yeah, uh, on definitely system. a lot for Harvey Taylor and Market Street bridges there. Yeah. Yes. Do, do they talk about like if the tolling doesn't happen, will that delay? I mean, to find well, funding that's the, or that's the, the, the specific and I. You know, it's nine bridges that are part of that tolling right. concept. Right. I know nothing about the other sure. eight because yeah. they're not, not here. here. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't really care. Um, this one, this the South Bridge, they have. I mean, they're they're maintaining. It. In fact, they're spending significant money every year now doing things to maintain this so that they don't end up with a weight restriction or anything like that uh, on the bridge or cause you know, have to do a closure for anything more than a few hours that they have to, you know, because that, you know, 100,000 cars on the network would, I can't even imagine. Um, so it's a, it's a short term need to get that bridge fixed because they're spending like a million dollars a year or so just to maintain it at this point in the current condition. So why do that if you can't just, you know, um, you know do it? So it's not a thing that you can say, well, instead of, you know, in, in 25 to 28, be doing this, you can't kick it back another 10 years or something. You're just astronomically increasing that cost. So it's a sh short term improvement need that you're going to have to find, whether it's, you know, various sources of federal funding, polling, that the other thing with the federal funding, you know, that had 20, that has to be matched at 20% by the state. So the state has to do some revenue. Uh, activity to match that so that we can get all of the federal dollars that we're theoretically entitled to as well. So there's just way too many moving parts at this point to understand what's going on. 
Yeah, I'd be curious uh, how much of the diversion uh, went to 81 um, and from a from a through through traffic standpoint yeah, uh, that I, you know, and that's going to overload I, that that bridge yeah, uh, which which but, also but, has issues. But I, but I would actually prefer that it do the 581 up to 81 thing rather than uh, you know, third street market street. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. From a safety uh, standpoint, certainly yeah. wrap it, wrap it around the beltway rather than that. So, uh, um, yeah, anyway. Well, and that's it. it. Interstate 81, uh, is, is challenged already at that, at that, uh, um, crossing, right. uh, there. Well, we're, we're actually the, um, uh, you know, the 81 study that I, was talking about you know i said there's public meetings in december but we're, we're not anticipating doing kind of the formal release of the overall document until some of this 83 stuff is worked out because it just complicate you know then you're talking about money spent on 81 and you know, so we're we're hoping to get some of these answers on where the funding is coming from and what programs before we release the 81 thing so we can answer the question, well, where are you getting that from? All right. All right. Yep. Nothing's easy. Now, do you have a, do you have an overview on the, on the luncheon? Uh, I thought it went uh, very well. Um, uh, the, the DCED speaker on, uh, on broadband, I thought did a nice job. Both speakers spoke Two of the three spoke a little longer than we anticipated. Um, so, but um, she actually gave out her personal cell phone number a couple of times for people if they had any questions on that. In fact, with the, I, I reached back out to her after because there's broadband money in the infrastructure bill. I reached out to her afterwards and and asked the question, well, what does that you know how's that gonna uh, flow through? And she said, you know, we're, we're trying to figure that right out right now. And she offered to have a, a follow-up discussion to brainstorm on some things. So um, we're trying to schedule that now. It, uh, you know, I'm going to participate in that along with probably Scott Burford from Dauphin County and Brenda Watson from Perry County. Uh, she's given us an opportunity to have input into how those funds might be used um, for broadband expansion. So I a great contact. Um, and then we, the PennDOT secretary, um, you know, she's trying to cover all these kind of crazy issues that I was um, right now, but. She's uh, worried about the other eight bridges. Yes, right, <laughs> right, exactly. But I, I, I mean, I got a number of positive comments um, afterwards. People came up to me and said good things. I, you know, I, I, I learned some stuff. So um, I thought it was effective. You know, I, I almost wish the infrastructure bill would have passed the day before <laughs> the luncheon rather than a couple of weeks after. But, um, you know, it, it does, you know, even that it just recently passed, it does, it shows that it was a timely conversation, which is what we wanted to have. Right. Yeah. Sounds like it went well then. Yeah. I thought it did. All right. I guess uh, moving on to the next uh, next uh, re item under the reports is the uh, term nominations. Yeah. So in September, letters went out to the municipalities for nominations. Uh, those all came in um, and were the lists were compiled and sent to the respective county commissioners by November 1. Um, at this point in time, um, Perry County commissioners have already reappointed their um, representatives, so Jim Fuller, Frank Campbell, Nina Fidget, and Bill Lyons are, should have received their reappointment letters. And last night, I believe the Perry County Planning Commission had decided on their um, nominations to the commissioners um, for their representatives coming up. Um, Dauphin County, um, their nominations have gone into the commissioners. I have not heard heard back about those appointments um, and the Dauphin County Planning Commission is going to talk about it at the December meeting. Yeah, December 1st, I think it is. Okay. Whatever the... yeah. Yeah. So it's in process. It looks like uh, um, all of the incumbents per se um, are interested in being maintained. I think um, one 
one Perry County person is being replaced. Mr. Funkhauser, Mr. Funkhauser. has uh, you know, asked to resign from his Perry County Planning Commission role. Um, and so the new um, the commission talked about this last night and proposed Dana Cotton as the uh, as basically Brian's replacement to the regional commission. Well, those appointments should be um, set by the January meeting. All right, I guess that covers that. So then uh, I guess uh, other business. Is there a meeting day? <laughs> Item yeah, if you don't, uh, you know, generally speaking, under other business, uh, I don't know if anybody uh, noticed yet or not, but we just posted an announcement that we probably all at least got a brief chance to get to know Rihanna Dupla while she was here. Um, a law firm sought her out, reached out, and offered her a legal secretary uh, position, which is an interest she's apparently always had. So um, she just recently left us, and now uh, we have an ad posted, and have been we have an, an initial interview scheduled, I think, next week already. But if anybody's aware of anyone who would be interested in that administrative assistant role, we are actively seeking good candidates. Seems like we're filling that in quite often. Yep, that's been a, well, and it's, it's you know, it's, 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 it's a difficult position in the yes. first place. And in this market, you know, when everybody is looking for somebody, uh, like I said, she didn't, she told me, she said, I, I, I never looked. They found me and called me and that kind of thing. So that's, that's how it is, I guess. Well, he dog. Absolutely. Other than that, it's, it's been what? This will be two years soon since any of the technical staff, because it was right before the pandemic. It was like February right. before the pandemic right. that we've had um, anything there. So that's a that's a positive. All righty. Uh, oh. Executive director salary. This is the Next highlight item. of the meeting. <laughs> I was trying to remember what whatever happened there, but uh, and I didn't even see that uh, on the agenda. So okay. There you go. So how how are we uh, to to handle this uh, discussion? First thing I'm going to do here when when Diane and I walk out of the room, I'll I'll stop the uh, recording. Uh, temporarily, so it's not recorded, and then the work group that's. Yeah, I think John Kirshner and Dan Tanell and um, Jim Turner were to um, collect some thoughts prior to this meeting. I'm not certain if they did or did not, um, but I'll let them, you know, share whatever thoughts. Yeah, they we have. did, Diane. Um, yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> So, um, you guys have your discussion. Let yeah. us know when you're done. Yeah. We'll come get you. Bob, you just, Bob, you just yeah. step out of yeah. the door. We'll, we'll, we'll be yeah. out there hanging out. So, I'm going right. to be here. Mug up and, Thanks, you know, guys. I'll be out for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, we are back. All right. Thanks, Steve. And we uh, discussed, uh, John, John presented the. Uh, um, the group's uh, discussion and uh, came up came up with a uh, um, a proposed um, salary uh, increase uh, for the executive director and uh, uh, that was uh, motion seconded and uh, all those in in uh, favor uh, voted uh, affirmatively. Uh, so uh, anyway, uh, John will follow up uh, with uh, you. You'll need that number or Diane. I'm not sure which. In the past, one way or the other. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Diane's yeah. got the spreadsheet uh, most handy that has the staff salaries in it. So we'll okay. it that. All right. Well, then, yeah, John will John will get in touch then uh, uh, with Diane and and work that out. Uh, we weren't sure exactly, John. The group really wasn't sure what what uh, kind of salary uh, increases there were for the staff um, and uh, how that how that picture fit together. You want to talk about that? Are you at, you, at, you want to know? Yeah, yeah. That that, that would that'd be good to provide that information. I, I think originally we you know. We always, when we do that, we look at what the cost of living increases have been. And last year it was 1%, I think. So, but we went with about three and a half typical um, increase at that point. This year, when we look at the more current cost of living, it was six point something or other, something like that, which we were apprehensive to do. We, we ended up on a, I guess, an average um, number of close to the 5%. Uh, range at this point we just we, we we didn't we felt apprehensive to go to the full cost of living especially since we had gone above cost of living last year we felt that was reasonable um, but we didn't want to get to the point where we start out stripping our uh, you know our revenue stream moving forward so we went with about you know that roughly five um, percent a little bit higher a little bit lower maybe for the uh, various staff members but it's in that ballpark is where we were. All right. And we're we're going to do those staff annual reviews next week um, with everybody and relay that information. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, John will John will get in touch and uh, and provide you with the uh, the information then. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks. And uh, thanks to the uh, to uh, the folks uh, pulling that together, John. Dan and and uh, and Jim, appreciate that. And with that, our, I guess our uh, pleasure. Yep. If there's any public comment at this point, it's only members on the call anymore, so we don't have any yep. members. Nobody, nobody stopped in the conference room. All right. Well, I guess uh, we're ready for adjournment then. Uh, Dates. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Here, everybody. See you again. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Yep. And, Likewise. And then you happy too. Thanksgiving, and Steve. Happy yeah. deer season. <laughs> See you.